Sous le ciel de Paris s'envole une chanson mmh. Elle est née d'aujourd'hui dans le cœur d'un garçon Sous le ciel de Paris marchent des amoureux Hello, my name is Simon Waddell and I work as Head of Training for Robert Piguet Perfumes and I would like to welcome you to this uh, initial training video which we've produced for your further information on the brand, how to operate best with some of the fragrances that we produce and hopefully share a few pearls of wisdom with you as to the product that we create, a little bit of the history that surrounds it and how to improve your understanding and operation with the fragrances that we create. And also try to share with you a little bit about why what we create is so special and the reason why we're a very important player in the niche market today. Robert Piguet was born in 1898 in Switzerland to a prominent Swiss banking family. He emigrated to Paris at the age of 25 to pursue his first passion for fashion. In 1933, he established his own atelier at the end of the Champs-Élysées, and for 20 years during the time that he was working in this atelier, he was responsible for really putting a very important hallmark onto the world of high-end French fashion. As well as creating his own collection of high-end uh, dresswear and evening wear for ladies and men, he was responsible for teaching some of the most important designers, really, that France has ever seen. These designers include Christian Dior, Hubert Givenchy and Pierre Balmain. And we think it's fair to say, really, that without Robert Piguet, these fashion houses wouldn't exist the way that they do today because they are responsible for, to a certain extent, maintaining a Piguet aesthetic. During the time that Robert Piguet was uh, working within fashions and uh, teaching these budding designers how to create and work around material and dressing women, he decided to move into creating fragrance, which obviously was um, an important expression of the creativity that he was feeling. In 1944, he started work with a lady called Germaine Celia, who would move on to become one of the most celebrated perfumers of her time. She was a little bit of a punk, really, in the field that she worked in, and the work that she created with Robert Piguet, which starts in 1944 with Bondit, would really be one of the most important turning points in niche perfumery. And it's at 1944 with Bandit where we will begin our journey. Bandit is a fragrance really I like to think of as being light years ahead of its time. Considering that it was created over 70 years ago, when you smell Bandit in this current day, you get a fragrance which smells very much like something that contemporary niche fragrance houses are producing. It's very evocative of the time it was produced. If we think 1944, we're coming towards the end of the Second World War. And it's always very clear to me whenever I smell Bandit that there are uh, nuances of the trouble and the turmoil that was happening at that time uh, included in the luxurious uh, effect of this fragrance. Bandit is a green leather Chypre fragrance, which initially, upon first smelling, is quite angular and very striking. This then powders down into a soft, green, woody leather bouquet. Bandit includes ingredients of leather, patchouli, jasmine, and of course oak moss at the base, which puts it into the Chypre family. Bondit was created around a bad boy concept, which was used by Robert Piguet in one of his fashion collections. He sent models down a runway who were brandishing swords, wearing villain masks, and waving toy guns in the air. Now to think of what was happening at the time and the way that fashion was presented, this is something that I've always felt is light years ahead of its time, as this is the way that fashion designers very much work in the present day. And this is what I find is so exciting about this fragrance, is that we open the collection with something that is very appropriate to modern fragrance tastes and sensibilities. It's a fragrance with a slightly punk ethic, and really Germaine Celia, the perfume that created it, she poured an awful lot of raw ingredients into her perfumes, far more than anything that was going on at that time. And that's what the Piguet fragrances are known for today. They're very deep, they're very atmospheric, and they're very panoramic, and they fill the spaces that they encounter. And this establishes what we now know as the Piguet DNA. 
all of the fragrances that are in the collection are really a continuation of the mindset of Bandit. And it's a fragrance that we're very proud of because it's a game changer. Moving on to 1947 and the fragrance Fracas, which was created by Germaine Sellier and Robert Piguet. Fracas really needs a little introduction as a fragrance because most people working in the industry will have heard of her and will have had some experience of her. She is the white floral tuberose fragrance which set the groundwork for most other white floral fragrances to follow. We're very proud about Fracas's ability to click refresh on her personality. She's a fragrance that although created nearly 70 years ago, is continually appropriate. She's continually appearing in glossy magazines and periodicals around the world. And she's continually discovered by very high-end and influential and highly stylish people. Fracas, as mentioned before, is a lush, creamy, tuberose floral fragrance. Really, she's the queen of all the tuber roses. In amongst the tuber rose, there are delicate layers of jasmine, gardenia, orange blossom, violet, and musks at the base. But really, Fracar is the legacy tuber rose fragrance from which other tuber rose fragrances have been created. Fracar, meaning trouble, is a fragrance which really is an opera in a bottle. Anybody that you encounter wearing for a car, you're certainly going to know about it. And she's a five-star expression of what a white floral fragrance could be. Uh, for a car is a legend and something of which we're very, very proud. She's always in fashion, always appropriate. And for a car is a fragrance which women continue to discover as their signature fragrance and spend the rest of their life wearing. Uh, for a car is the true essence of a legendary fragrance creation. Fasi. The Visa is a 1947 fragrance created by Germaine Sellier and Robert Piguet. She was reorchestrated in 2007 by Aurelien Guichard, and really it's this reorchestration of Visa which has put the Robert Piguet fragrance brand into the mindset of the modern fragrance consumer as being a brand to really contend with. Visa is something we're very proud of because she carries such a broad appeal. She's currently being adored by men and women of all nationalities and all ages. She is a gourmand oriental fragrance with notes of white peach, white pear, ylang ylang, sandalwood, patchouli and a poponax with a touch of vanilla at the base. She's like a nectar on the skin in that once you've encountered her, you just feel like you want to nuzzle up and smell her more and more. Uh, she has a wonderful silage which is uh, suitable for daytime wear and also in the evening time she's very suitable to slightly more glamorous uh, occasions. Um, but really Visa is a fragrance that can be presented to customers of all ages and all nationalities and the chances are I can pretty much guarantee that they're going to fall in love with Visa the way that we have done ourselves. Moving on to Bagari, which is a fragrance that was created by Francis Baron working with Robert Piguet in 1950 and reorchestrated for us once again by Aurelien Guichard in 2006. Bagari is a fragrance for a woman that is a dreamer. It's a very romantic fragrance and it is a floral aldehyde, very reminiscent of the 1950s period in Paris when it was created. An aldehydic fragrance is a fragrance which has had certain chemicals added into the composition to give the fragrance an element of lift and sparkle. Indeed, when you smell Bagari, you really get this sense of French quality and a sunlit moment when possibly the cocktail hour is around the corner and the woman is wearing her favourite dress and really wants to make a romantic encounter. It's a fragrance which is very charming, very spirited. It has that element of sparkle with just a little touch of warmth at the base, thanks to the amber. And once again, it's very reminiscent of the golden era of perfume that it was created in, of course, the world's capital city of fragrance, Paris. Ma chambre, la forme cage. Calypso from 1950 is a lush floral chypre, which was inspired by Greek mythology. The fragrance is very lively and dynamic. Uh, it's a passionate fragrance, which is really uplifting on the skin. Uh, Calypso is a fragrance which contains some of the most expensive uh, raw ingredients known to the perfumer's palate. These include Bulgarian rose and orris butter, and it's these ingredients at the heart of Calypso which we feel really give it its appeal. 
It has ambroxan and suede at the base, which gives it that lovely, soft, lingering quality, which so many of the Piguet fragrances are known for having. Um, but there's definitely a lively and dynamic um, edge at the top of Calypso, thanks to the mandarin and uh, other floral inclusions. So Calypso is a fragrance that's dynamic. It's a fragrance that's sparkling, very spirited. It's the perfect fragrance to take away on a holiday because it's uh, warm in its character. And it's a fragrance that really is a means of escape for the wearer. Moving on to Cravache, which was originally created in 1963 and once again reorchestrated for us by Aurelien Guichard. Cravache is quite an important fragrance because it was the last fragrance that was created um, as part of the classic collection. Robert Piguet was actually unfortunately no longer with us, but the fragrance was created very much in the vein of the other fragrances that were available as part of the Piguet collection. Cravache is inspired by an equestrian outing and really is um, a sporty fragrance by its nature. Um, it's very uplifting, very dynamic and very energising. It's very crisp and very clarifying on the skin and it's the perfect fragrance to wear um, for a day that's going to be spent uh, widely outdoors. Um, it is a homage to classic Italian style colognes of the time, which have come back round to being of course very in vogue at the moment. Uh, Cravache includes notes of lavender and clary sage at the heart, vetiver, orange blossom and other warm and rich and noble woods at the base. Uh, Cravache is a fragrance which is really suitable for men and women alike, but certainly it's a perfect fragrance to offer to a distinguished gentleman um, that wants um, a fragrance that isn't going to be too much of a style statement, but just a, a, a real comment on a person who appreciates quality and refinement thanks to its uh, beautiful composition and refined ingredients. Cravache is a very agreeable fragrance. <laughs> The next collection of fragrances we will look at will be six fragrances created in 2012 by Aurelien Guichard. What's important about these fragrances is that they were the first products created since the last fragrances of the 1960s under the name of the Robert Piguet banner. The first fragrance which was created and launched was Bois Noir, which is a sensual woody elixir with nuances of sandalwood, cedarwood, guyacwood, a poponax and some leather facets at the base. As its name suggests, Bois Noir has a slightly dark, brooding personality, but it's a very sexy fragrance on the skin, which a lot of men have really fallen in love with. Ladies love to smell Bois Noir on their men. They find it uh, a very sexy fragrance in its appeal, and it appeals to fragrance wearers across all ages. It's a nice modern combination, but also it's perfect for evening wear when perhaps the wearer wants to give off a slightly more sensual appeal. It's a very sexy fragrance. Uh, Bois Noir is interestingly noted as being Aurelien Guichard's personal favorite out of all of the fragrances that he has created for Robert Piguet. And it's a surefire winner for men of all ages. Je ne veux pas travailler. Robert Piguet Perfumes invites you on a fragrant journey with 2012's Casbar. Casbar is a fragrance which was inspired by the souks of Marrakesh. If we think about these places, they are full of life, entertainment, colour, they're a feast for the senses. And this is very much something that we feel that we've achieved in the juice of Casbar. It is a fragrance full of atmosphere with interesting and lively and dynamic ingredients, including 23 different incenses, orris butter, angelica root, and black pepper against a polished backdrop of cedar wood. It really is a composition for the daring and the lively, and it's a fragrance which kind of is like no other in the collection. It really stands alone. It's got a charming spirit, which is very uplifting, and it's certainly a memorable fragrance for those that encounter it. Casbar is an enchanting and mesmerizing fragrance experience and takes you on a fragrant journey around the four corners of the globe. It's an unforgettable experience as a perfume and it's definitely something to try because it's a fragrance unquite like any other. <laughs> Mademoiselle Piguet is the ultimate expression of everything that the Robert Piguet woman should be in the modern day. It is an uplifting, lively and charming fragrance with a romantic heart as well. This is achieved by a trio of simple ingredients working in wonderful harmony together. These ingredients being bergamot, orange blossom, and tonka bean on the base. For me, Mademoiselle Piquet is the perfect fragrance for a movie star to be wearing at the Cannes Film Festival whilst walking along the red carpet. 
is the ultimate expression of glamour, femininity and romance. It's a sophisticated fragrance which is unforgettable, alluring, uplifting and completely charming in its personality. It's a beautiful addition to the range. Notes is a soft floral foisère fragrance from 2012, once again created by Aurelien Guichard. It's becoming a very important player in the collection of Robert Piguet fragrances because it's appealing to men in their masses all around the world. It's an uplifting, lively and very refreshing tonic fragrance which has that out of the shower freshness which we feel that so many men want in their fragrance. But the difference with notes is that it's got the Piguet DNA of a very long lasting structure on the skin. It has notes of geranium, orange blossom, tonka, oak and vetiver amongst other noble ingredients. And we feel that Notes is really becoming a modern classic in the Robert Piguet collection. We're very proud of its growing success rate that it seems to be having around all of the markets. It's particularly uplifting and tonic in warmer weather and it just seems to be the perfect proposition for the new male Robert Piguet customer. Eau de Robert Piguet is a dry woody aromatic fragrance from 2012. It would be easy to talk at length about the effect that Oud has had on modern perfumery over the last 10 to 15 years especially, but we feel that we really hit the nail on the head when we address the Oud concept with Oud de Robert Piguet. It is a fragrance which is rich, profound, haunting and very enigmatic in its character. Our Oud de Robert Piguet contains notes of saffron, myrrh, patchouli, incense, all interlaced around a central Oud de Robert Piguet theme. Oud is a resin which is collected from the Acalaria tree in the desert. It is, for many people, evocative of the ultimate paradise. The resin is collected and then burned, and after time gives off the most amazing, aromatic and haunting qualities, from which many people feel is a treasure beyond uh, anything else that is available. It is uh, a fragrance which is unforgettable, completely panoramic and extremely evocative of other realms of being. Um, oud is actually a way of life for many people in the world and it's a pleasure to be working around such a high quality expression of oud in Oud de Robert Piguet. Petit Fracas is a modern floral fragrance from 2012. It is light-hearted and enchanting by character and really we see Petit Fracas as being the younger daughter of her predecessor Fracas, of course from the 1940s. She takes the central theme of fracas and just adds a bit of a lighter hearted character. We've played down the tuberose ever so slightly. We've added some gourmand notes of white fruit at the top and a cocoa note at the base, which gives it a very charming and addictive gourmand quality. We feel that we've done a very good job with Petit Fracas in opening up the fracas audience to a new generation. Really Petit Fracas was the fragrance that nobody thought that we should create because fracas being such a masterpiece, nobody thought that it could ever be better. Um, but we've actually succeeded very well because the response that Petit Fracas has had has been exceptional. Uh, they've welcomed her into a new generation of Piguet customers. We've just redressed her slightly and opened her up to a newer, younger and slightly more spirited audience. The next fragrance in the collection that we'll look at is Rose Perfection from 2013, which is a profound floral fragrance. We wanted to create the ultimate rose fragrance in a Robert Piguet style. We managed to do this by using very high levels of Bulgarian rose oil and rose absolute sitting beautifully on a base of musks and a little touch of sandalwood. Rose Perfection is the ultimate expression of everything a rose fragrance should be. It's very common that rose fragrances can often dry down to becoming powdery or soapy on the skin, but this isn't the case with Rose Perfection. I always think of Rose Perfection as being an electric rose fragrance because as soon as you smell it, it's like somebody's switched on a rose to its highest possible voltage, and that's what you have in the juice. So it's the ultimate rose fragrance in the Piguet DNA style. Alameda is a woody and oriental fragrance from 2013. It takes its inspiration from the parks and gardens which surround the Alhambra Castle in Granada. What we really wanted to do was try to evoke the beauty of these grounds once it's been warmed through with the summer sun. We've managed to do this uh, with addictive notes of candied patchouli, amber, lily, 
iris and castoreum. This is a fragrance which has a noble quality, which is again very addictive and smooth and sultry on the skin. It warms up very well uh, as the skin warms and it is a beautiful unisex offering from the Piguet collection. Gardenia de Robert Piguet is a modern floral fragrance from 2014. The way that we'd addressed rose with rose perfection the previous year, we felt that we wanted to address the beautiful Gardenia Accord, but give it a little bit of the Robert Piguet treatment. We feel that we've managed to do an immaculate job with this fragrance with high levels of Gardenia Absolute combined with black cashmere, lily and Madagascan vanilla. This is a fragrance which is warm, sensual, has a beautifully creamy dry down and is evocative of a kiss from the sun on a tropical beach. Vie Entense is the new oriental gourmand fragrance from the house of Robert Piguet. It was launched in 2014. Inspired by one of the house's classic offerings, Viantance is a pilgrimage to the brand's roots and a stolen glance at its future. The atmosphere that has been set for this new offering is rich, mysterious and seductive. Gourmand layers of a rich plum note at the heart, together with the introduction of saffron at the top and incense at the base, work to increase the fragrance's volume, adding to her opulence and complexity. An exotic dalliance of sweetness and spice Viantance's enigmatic character renders the wearer spellbound from the very first encounter. Warm patchouli, soft creamy sandalwood and musks amplify the brightness of the gourmand accords into an altogether more intense territory. Viantance continues a story which began many years ago, only adding new levels of depth and mystique whilst guiding the wearer knowingly into the future. Eau de Duvain is a deep woody floral fragrance and takes the theme of Eau de Robert Piguet, which we've touched on earlier, to uh, new territory and further heights. We wanted to create two new Oud fragrances to complement the original Oud de Robert Piguet theme and just lend them a darker and possibly more gourmand uh, personality. With Eau de Vaughan, it's a very dark and addictive and noble fragrance. We've managed to do this with Espresso Bean and Tonka Absolute. And really Eau de Vaughan is the dark uh, shot of espresso at the end of the feast of Robert Piguet Oud fragrances. It's not for the faint hearted, but it's definitely something that you should try because once you have tried, it's, it's really quite addictive by its nature. Oud Delice is the new woody fruity fragrance from Robert Piguet, which is taking the central theme of Oud de Robert Piguet into new and tantalizing territory. We've managed to do this by including Provencal honey oil, fig and caramelized amber into the composition of the original Oud de Robert Piguet. Really, this is a fragrant ambrosia, which it sets off a yearning and ignites a hunger within the wearer to experience more of the fragrance. It has a very addictive quality, which hangs sweet like a nectar on the skin and is very Moorish in its character. It's a fragrance we're very proud of. It's being very well received by our public. So we've taken a walk through the main fragrances in the Robert Piguet collection, starting at 1944 with Bondit and moving right up to the current day with the uh, new Oud editions for 2015. I very much hope that you found it informative and inspiring. Um, we've of course only touched upon each fragrance uh, fairly briefly. We could talk all day about any one particular given fragrance, but what I would love to suggest is that if you feel that there are further things that you want to find out about any particular one of the perfumes or indeed the range in its entirety, please do feel free to contact me directly. My email and mobile number will be coming up at the end of this footage and I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today and wish you continued luck with your sales of the Piguet range.